Welcome to the second episode of Series 30, everyone. There was a slight delay in today's release because brains tend to fail us at times, and after getting assaulted by a giant bug on my bike ride last night, I forgot all about getting it taken care of. But we're here now, and we're happy to have you here with us. Before we dive into quite the episode where we finish our quest characters, uh, we actually don't really have any announcements at all for you right now. Uh, just remember, if you like what we are doing here, it would mean the world to us if you could leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or anywhere you get your podcasts and can leave reviews. Heck, in some places, you can even leave individual episode reviews if you'd like. All it takes is a little bit of time and really means the world to us. And we'll read it out on the air during these cold opens whenever we can record these together. For now, though, sit back, relax, and enjoy the wild ride that is part two of our quest character creation episode. On the last episode of Character Creation Cast, Kyle was creating a misty spy, Russ was creating a beetly doctor, I was creating a tentacly wizard, and Amelia was creating a uh let me let me check my notes here. Uh fairly normal invoker. Uh we're going to be picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. All right, so uh, we all have our our looks, effectively, mm -hmm. body, face, and vibe. Uh, what's next now? Step three is... Show your style. Ooh. Yeah. I wear blank and blank, and there's no <laughs> specifications to these blanks. It's just fill them in whatever you want. What are you wearing? I wear and, blank, and blank move and with... move with blank. Yeah. Hmm. I'm calling a fluttering cape just right now. That would have been so great for my misty body, though. <laughs> Sucks. I already have a name and a theme for this child, and I love them. Ooh. I'm wearing fingerless gloves. <laughs> Where are your fingers? They're fingerless. I'm also fingerless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could go with fingerless missed. gloves. Oh, there's no way that I'm not picking a billowing jumpsuit. <laughs> oh, yes. Ooh, love that. I want a billowing ju jumpsuit in real life. Oh, what else do I want to oh wear? Oh, my God. Um, I'm also gonna. I'm gonna say um, also a shimmering cloak. Oh, antique eyeglasses sounds so amazing for my weird tentacle monstrosity. <laughs> I, I love that for you. <laughs> I do love that they have a patterned hijab as one of the options. Yeah, we love like putting that in there. We love that. Uh, uh, antique eyeglasses. I'm going homemade earrings, which isn't on the list, but it combines two other ones yeah. on the list, so it's fine. I, I picture my character not really having uh, visible eyes, so like they place the eyeglasses in random spots on their quote-unquote head. I love it. Uh, just to be quirky. Uh, what else do I have? I'm making my own for this, too. I'm doing a pendant filled with fireflies, inspired by... Um, Asia O'Hara, the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 10. Hmm. <laughs> That's a reference for the gays. <laughs> and the gays alone. Uh, I will go with runes in my hair as well. So my antique eyeglasses and runes in my hair. I'm going to put That's a cute look. I'm going to put quotes around hair. Uh, because <laughs> okay. my hair, that was my question. My hair is also tentacles. <laughs> so Do you braid your I, tentacles? I, I, sometimes they braid themselves. I love it. They like to cuddle. Yeah, they do. They're very gentle. Mm. So I, I have three different sizes of tentacles. Body tentacles, antenna tentacles, and hair tentacles. <laughs> I'm for it. <laughs> okay, and what do we move with? Ooh. I'm going to go with an effortless glide. See, that makes too much sense for me. I feel like I should do great difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so I'm stout and tiny, so I have to run really quick. Um, so I'm putting arms behind me. Oh, yeah, you got a Naruto run. <laughs> I'm gonna, you got it. I'm gonna, I got it. I can do this. <laughs> music in That's a pop culture reference that I got, Ryan. <laughs> Write that down. That's Don't true. This. Uh, I move with music in my feet, so I'm constantly, like, you know, moonwalking on my tentacles and, and like, uh, just kind of bopping around. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm Gosh. changing mine. Nope, oh, Kyle's changing. I'm changing mine to a joyful whistle. Mm. Oh, you're whistling when you move. Before I stab you. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> Amazing. All right. What were you going to say, Russ? I was going to say, uh, has anyone named their character yet? I have not, because no. I haven't gotten to know them for to name them yet. Yeah. I always do that last. Yeah. Because I can't do I. So here's the thing. Um, in a... In a foolish endeavor, I made a podcast about creating characters when I have no ability to name characters. <laughs> I find it extremely stressful. That's not foolish. That's self-help. <laughs> this is you Just teaching working yourself. On it. Yep. <laughs> um, so I didn't name my character until we finished the look, and then I was like, I know their name. But I'll save that until we get to the end. Amazing. Okay. All right. So next is Call Home. Ooh. I'm from blank, where my people are known for blank. Ooh, I gotta go with a city in the mist. I know, right? That's yeah. T- I'm from a city in the mist. Because <laughs> you are mist. <laughs> are my, You're living mist. The mist is just my it's just my people. Do you do you miss it? I, I need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, a place I can't name. That's really interesting. Where my people are known for sleeping. Oh, interesting. Not what I'm actually going with, but... I'm going to go with ooh, either a seastead or a lonely island. Love that band. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with a lonely island, where my people are known for... Non-hierarchical... Hi, higher... I can't say that word. Hierarchical relationships. Non-hierarchical I'm relationships. I'm going to copy and paste that one instead of trying to spell it myself. So Proud of what, you. Thanks. Non-hierarchical relationships, meaning everybody's kind of on the same level at that point? Or? There's no communism. rulers. Yeah. Okay. Social communism. That makes sense. I live in a world with communism. <laughs> Never have to hear, respect me, respect your elders again. Hmm. So I picked a capital city known for creating historic works of art. Ooh. I picked... Uh, I'm from an underground borough, which I made up, where my people are known for their ra- neutral rationality. Oh, these are so good. Mm-hmm. Inventing like, the future. Like you can just fill these in with your own stuff and just make it your, just do what you want. Yeah. Or like the options they give you are really good. They are. There's a lot of really good options in here. Um, I'm going to go with inventing the future because that sounds pretty sweet for like a wizard. Mm-hmm. I also like just the simplicity of treating strangers with love. Yeah. Like, it's so simple, but it's so soft. It, it's really interesting it's uh, when you think about that, too, because if they're known for that, that might not be the norm in this world at that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you write and forms the rest of the world. Exactly. Especially with some of these. Some of these are like losing a great war, mm-hmm. resisting a brutal ruling order. Uh, restoring justice to the land. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of different ways that this could influence the world. Once profile. ruling a vast empire. Mm-hmm. That, that one's very loaded. Mm-hmm. Goodness. Yes. So the next step is believe in something. Ooh. You choose an ideal that guides your behavior. This is your moral core, the belief that will help you know what your character might do in lots of situations. So it's also another choose your own, choose one or make your own. So I believe in blank. If I write, I believe in it. Am I just making Naruto at that point? <laughs> Gosh, please don't make Naruto. <laughs> Goodness. I'm going to do pragmatism. I believe in pragmatism. You value logic and efficiency above other concerns. It Very would be cool. irrational to fight. We should negotiate. Yeah, I really like how these are laid out. Um, they give kind of a quote of what that uh, person that follows that uh, Mm -hmm. sense of uh, belief uh, would kind of say, which is cool, like heroism is courage is everything, always take charge, um, all that sort of stuff. And it's it's laid out really nicely. I'm not sure any of these feel right, but I can't think of what does. What are you trying to do for your character? Why did they leave home is a good question. Hmm. 
if they believed in something that their home couldn't give them. Capital City with all your artwork. I hated art. It was ugly. <laughs> I'm just like not a good painter. Just... <laughs> Um, so for myself, I come from a city of neutrality and I believe in morality. Mm. So my city was too neutral on things and there is a right and wrong, I believe. We hate moderates. <laughs> <laughs> if I add a single letter, it becomes mortality. Then I'm playing a very different character. Mm -hmm. All right. Which, there are abilities in this game that change your flaws, ideals, and that kind of thing. It's very interesting. All right. I'm going to go um, with pleasure for my uh, my person. Um, what is that? You see comfort and joy and believe people should enjoy being alive. Nice. Which is why they dance all the time. I'm going to go with heroism. Heroism was, you don't stand idly by when someone's in danger. Courage is everything. Always take charge. Mm-hmm. How very invoker of you. <laughs> that is very good. So the next thing after we do our beliefs is, so this, the full sentence is, I believe in blank, but my blank side can get in my way. And you choose your vulnerability. I think I'm going to go with my wrathful side. Mm. Oh, we have some wrathful mist over here. You ever seen the movie The Mist? <laughs> <laughs> Stephen King wasn't lying. I'm going to go oblivious. But my oblivious side can get in the way. You often don't see what's right in front of you, even if it has feigns. And I love the quote, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm going idiot. But my idiot side. And the quote is great. Because the quote is, ooh, what does this big red button do? <laughs> Everyone thinks that's a dumb idea. That's exactly why you do it. Do I go with reckless or vain? I'm going to go with reckless. Oh my god, I love the quote for that one. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of tigers. Time to go pet the big kitties. <laughs> that's amazing. Awesome. So I believe in pleasure, but my oblivious side can get in my way. Looks like there's one more thing left then. Uh, for, Two more things. Or for the, uh, for the paragraph sentence. Yes, paragraph one more. Okay. And that is dream big. I dream of blank. And there's a lot of them. Uh, some of the most interesting ones. Meeting the Grim Reaper. Meeting my god. Oh. Z. Killing my past. <laughs> uh, becoming a notorious gambler. There's a lot of interesting ones here. Ooh, Amelia, the recovering a stolen artifact from my people looks like your kind of person. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Meeting my parents for the first time. That's interesting. If only I could spell. That would be great, everybody. I'm going to go with traveling to the stars. Uh, I was just about to take that one. Take it. Take no, it. I'll take it. No, that's one. right. I, I added You're another one. You're made of mist. Just fly upwards. No, yours, yours is cooler. Traveling to the stars. I can't go there. There's no atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to hold me together. Uh, making every stranger smile. I think I'll go with that one. You run up to a stranger. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> Flawless tactic. <laughs> Russ, what did you go with? I went with inspiring my, convincing my people to care about the world. Care, please. <laughs> please. The environment Stop. is dying. Stop being neutral. <laughs> your moderatism is killing things. You can make your own stuff up in here too, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So the last thing is gearing up. I want to change Wait, my, I, I want to change my dream, yet. I think. I'm going to change my dream. Oh, oh, wait. Sorry. What's your dream? I'm going to make something up. Um, uh, going back to the future. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. All right. Now I got to name and stuff. Are we going to gear I up before name. names or? Oh, what do you want? You can do gear. What are we doing? So the eighth step yeah. is gear. Okay. And what you do for gear, it says you pick three common weapons and one useful item. So. Pretty simple. Three Most common, common weapons. weapons deal two damage. If you're unarmed, you deal one damage. Okay, so common weapons. I get all the like normal uh, medieval fantasy tropey type ancient weaponry, right? Um, I'm assuming with the amount of malleability that this game has already that we could probably invent kind of a weapon. Totally. Okay, so one... 
my character's got a whip just because it's like a tentacle. Um, two would be kind of like a kind of like a a whip where the the tip is a projectile. Ooh. So like you you it's like a a whip sling, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, that sounds a pretty. Cool. A whip sling. Oh, I like that. Okay, so I've got a whip, a whip lane, and I don't know what else for the third thing. Because the other option is a sip, and I don't think that really works. No. <laughs> a, a, a slip? <laughs> <laughs> I like I like whip lane better. Mm-hmm. All right, so I got to write these down, right? Yes. Yeah, and you're here. Uh, and what it says about ranged weapons is if you choose a ranged weapon like a bow or crossbow, you must also use one of your item slots for ammunition. You don't need to keep track of how much ammunition you have, but you might run out if you lose equipment. Okay. Or if, like, you have a really bad roll on something, you might lose your quiver, that kind of thing. And you also get one useful item. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just trying to think of the another ridiculous tentacle-themed weapon. Um, I'm taking the friend flute from the from the useful items. Oh, this is a small magic whistle that knows who your friends are. When you blow in the whistle, only your friends nearby can hear its sound. Hmm. Uh, so my three weapons. I have taken a scalpel, a reflex hammer, and a stethoscope. I love it. It's going full doctor. <laughs> full doctor. I, I like that I just uh, put on whip bullets as an inventory item. Yeah, that's valid. Um, if you want to know how I use a stethoscope, I just hold it over my head and spin it. <laughs> <laughs> I picked a sword, a knife, and brass knuckles. Valid. I'm gonna say, um, what are those weapons? Um, they're like, uh, they're like nunchucks, but they're like way bigger. There's like usually a chain between like two bigger sticks, I guess. Some sort of. I don't remember. I don't remember. I know what you mean, but I don't remember. I'm gonna say that, but instead of a chain, it's like a tentacle. Of course it is. So it's just like kind of this wiggly looking stick, but then I can like make it all like a rigid bow, like a bow staff. Mm hmm. So I could do some, uh, what was that? What was that guy from Little John? Little John bow, bow wielding from, uh, gosh, Robin Hood. Sure. Yes, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. You're so right. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally not a reference that does not go over my head. Okay. Either of our heads totally hit us. Um, for my ma- my useful item i'm going with a magic flask a magic flask that automatically replenishes itself with the juice of your choice um i'm going apple juice i love it for my uh, weapons i chose um a jar of arsenic a jar of cyanide and a jar of ghost pepper oil Ooh, these are my weapons for my useful item i put a set of spices that make anything edible Ooh, nice! Mm. Like, give me that edible. I don't know, rock, like, rock, right. dirt. <laughs> hey, you can eat your fork. Eat those utensils. Leave no trace behind. <laughs> oh gosh, there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, hmm. I'm gonna go with a magic candle. Also, the spices. That is an Amelia original. I love it. Mm-hmm. If you want it, you have to pay for it. Five dollars <laughs> on itch.io. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Better get that itch page up before this episode goes out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. One item, spice pouch. Spice pouch. Yeah. There's like no description. Wow. <laughs> you get a PDF download. <laughs> spice pouch. <laughs> it's a Microsoft Paint image of just like a pouch. Oh, <laughs> uh, if only. Okay, so uh, HP is 10 because it's always mm-hmm. 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, AP starts out as 10 because it starts yep. out as 10. Uh, but now we need a name. Um, possibly an alias. How old? That's uh, the question. The parentheses is pronouns. Yes. Oh, fun. Okay, cool, cool. I have named my person and filled that out already because I found a great choice. So, um, I can just read mine in its entirety now, and we can do like a full picture. Ooh, ooh. Let me figure out a name first. Oh, I have to do age and how tall I am. Yeah, or you can just do what I did and, and don't. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Oh, I'm really bad at last names. I guess how tall. Would you measure from if you're all tentacles and you can vary your height? I mean, it could be you could have a tentacle boy. You could do like a range. I am yeah. three to eight feet tall. Yeah. 
when he's three feet tall, his density increases. I'm going to get really creative <laughs> on this age and height here. I am infinite age and infinite height. I am the world breaker. <laughs> I'm 31. I'm 5'6". <laughs> <laughs> okay, that would be uh, too confusing with the doctor in the, in, in the, in the party. Were you going to say your name is like Doc or something? Yeah. <laughs> I've done My that before. Name is Doc. I play in an Urban Shadows game and I play a specter named Hunter, which is not confusing at all when there's a playbook called The Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm basically kind of uh, setting the tone for naming standards of my, uh, my people. Yeah, totally. That's why I did mm-hmm. too. It's a, it's a great naming standard. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally wrote wizard because I heard you say wizard so many times that I wrote it in as wizard. <laughs> Anybody ready to present yet? I think we're waiting for, every- waiting for everyone to be done. No. Waiting is for people who have patience. You have patience as a doctor. Huh. Hey. Bada bing, bada bing. I don't even know how to pronounce this name, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Follow your heart. It's Good a fantasy start. setting. I Good know. start. I know, right? I gotta now. I have to have a nickname because otherwise, uh, it would be a nightmare to play with. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Woo! Cool. I'm excited. <sighs> it was close. We almost didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who wants to go first? Kyle, do you want to go first? I feel like I'll do it. First. I've been waiting, but I didn't want to be the person that goes <laughs> so <first>, patiently. But... <laughs> okay. So, hi. My name is Juice by Lizzo. My pronouns are May Mem Mare. <laughs> I'm question mark years old and I stand question mark tall. I'm the party spy. <laughs> when people see me, they first notice my body of mist, romantic eyes, and an air of mystery. I wear fingerless gloves, a pendant filled with fireflies, and move with a joyful whistle. I'm from a city in the mist where my people are known for non hierarchical relationships. I believe in pragmatism, but my wrathful side can get in my way. I dream of traveling to the stars. I carry friend flute. A jar of arsenic, a jar of cyanide, and a jar of ghost pepper oil. I am Juice by Lizzo. <laughs> juice by Lizzo. <laughs> I love I it. I love you that have to say so, the entire name. so much. No shortening it to Juice or Lizzo or by. It's just my first name. It's, there's no middle name or last name. It's just that. <laughs> oh my god! It's all just it's all just apostrophe. <laughs> <laughs> Russ, do you want to read us yours? <laughs> sure. Uh, hi, my name is Teen Beetle. <laughs> they, them. I'm 14 years old and stand two feet, four inches tall. I'm the party's doctor. When people see me, they first notice my stout stature, antenna, <laughs> and androgynous vibes. I wear a fluttering cape, homemade exoskeleton earrings, and move with my arms behind me. I'm from an underground borough where my people are known for their neutral rationality. I believe in morality, but my idiot side can get in my way. I dream of convincing my people to care about the world, and I carry a scalpel, a stethoscope, a reflex hammer, and a magic flask full of orange juice. Amazing. Incredible. Wow. Oh my Absolutely God, incredible. Was... <laughs> it's Teen Beetle. <laughs> Totally Naruto runs. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's oh, the fastest a- way to move. <laughs> Who knows? That's just science. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan, do you want to go or do you want me to go? Uh, you can go first. <laughs> okay. Hello. My name is Imogen Merritt. She, her pronouns. I'm 31 years old and I stand five foot six inches tall. <laughs> I'm the party's invoker. <laughs> When people see me, they first notice my iridescent skin, severe jawline, and captivating grin. I wear a billowing jumpsuit, a shimmering cloak, and move with an effortless glide. I'm from a capital city where my people are known for creating historic works of art. I believe in heroism, but my reckless side can get in my way. I dream of recovering a stolen artifact for my people. I carry a sword, a knife, brass knuckles, and a set of spices that make anything edible. The only real person in the entire party. <laughs> <laughs> the only person that took this seriously. I didn't even make a necromancer. I took my it extremely it. seriously. I took it seriously. I'm just paying an anthropomorphic beetle man. Yeah. Beetle boy. And I'm just a mass of it. tentacles. It's fine. And Juice by Lizzo is a chart-topping number. Take it seriously. <laughs> what a world we've created. Uh-huh. 
All right. Uh, so I guess I'll go. Uh, everybody else kind of did a character voice, so I'll see what I can do. Hi, my name is Phil. Uh, you can call me Phil. They, them pronouns. <laughs> I'm 3,142 years old and stand 4.1 to 9.6 tentacles tall. I'm the wizard's party. I'm the party's wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Volcano Los Dos. <laughs> when people see me, they first notice my head of tentacles, vestigial antenna, and gentle disposition. I wear antique eyeglasses, runes in my hair, and move with music in my feet. I'm from a lonely island where my people are known for inventing the future. I believe in pleasure, but my oblivious side can get in my way. I dream of going back to the future. <laughs> and I like whips. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So now what needs to happen is that Phil needs to find whip my hair back and forth from <laughs> so that, my Lizzo's village. So that, that can be the music in their feet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Incredible. I think we've made some really powerful characters, <laughs> except we're technically not no, done. We're not. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love this so much. Okay. So what's next? Now we pick our abilities yeah. from the ability catalogs. Uh we each pick six abilities. Um in any order. You cannot pick legendary abilities. Legendary abilities are decided when and how you get it by the guide. Um, but everything else is free reign from your own stuffs. I'm gonna flip this over and write this on the back of this page because there's no spot for it. Because you're supposed to have the cards. Yeah, that is, that is one critique I'll give them. Give mm -hmm. us a spot to write it in, regardless. Agreed. Because, uh -huh. like, in between sessions, if you don't like keep the cards like in like a paperclip, you're gonna lose them and forget. Uh huh. Oh, TC, I hope you're listening to this and taking my criticism. <laughs> <laughs> Just email TC. Hello, TC. I will. Hi, TC. I hope you're listening. Here's my criticism. Uh, really love your game so far. I can't wait to play it sometime. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're not actually playing it. No. <laughs> we are actually, absolutely not playing this game, unfortunately. We're doing everything except playing it. Although, as I'd like to say, uh, character creation is a form of playing the game. So Fair. Yeah. We are technically playing the game uh, without actually playing the game. Oh, there's a Pegasus cloak. That sounds pretty cool. I can make people fly. Spicy. They only hover a meter above the ground, but that's still pretty cool. <laughs> I already got it. I don't know what I'm doing. Wow. I'm glad I chose wizard. This is cool. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the rest of us are like basically completely silent. <laughs> I was sorry, I blowed away. I didn't get this far in my in my pre read of of the rules. Um, one of the things I could choose is uh, an ability called No. By uttering the word No, you attempt to neutralize a spell that you see an NPC casting nearby. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh no! Wow. I'm really tempted to pick this one just because it says that you become cursed. <laughs> I mean, this is as close as you ever get to a necromancer now. <laughs> no. I'm obsessed with these abilities. How do, how can you choose? Well, you better. I know, right? Ah. Uh. <laughs> All right, I've got mine. So we do six, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh nope, I need one more. I counted wrong. This I'm is why we can't have math anymore. No, no more math no. in games. Mm -hmm. Even counting is too hard for us now. I want to be able to teleport right away, though. But if I do, I can't make people fly. Oh, decisions. Okay. All right. Um. Before I it? pick this, is there um, a way to get more abilities, like through advancement? Yeah, advancement, you get more abilities. Okay, cool. That's all I need to know for now, because we'll cover that later. Um, all right. Uh, then I think I think I got it. Six. I'm not going first this time. Okay. I'm not doing it. All right, I've got mine. Let's go reverse order then. All right. Ryan. So Phil... Um, is doing all of the abilities in plane shifting, uh, which gives them blink, so I can teleport to a location of your choice nearby. Basically vanish and leave behind a gentle dust gust of wind and instantly re reappear nearby. That's pretty cool. A uh, gate. This one's pretty sweet. Uh, you bind yourself to a room that you're in, and then later on, 
I can snap my fingers, or I guess my tentacles in this case, um, and any willing party members nearby are instantly teleported to the circle. Fun. Uh, Portal, which works like the video game Portal, uh, if you're familiar with that, where you uh, create a portal in one space, and then... If you're not familiar with that, it does still work that way, though. Yeah, it still works the same (laughs) way. So you create a portal uh, somewhere, um, and then you create another portal, and then those two portals are linked. And uh, and you can just pass through them. That's pretty cool. Um, mm-hmm. Dark door. Uh, you knock on a door, making it a temporary portal to a specific shadow plane. Um, and then when you open the door, you go inside the plane, uh, which is pretty sweet. And then this one is just phenomenal. Teleport. Snap your fingers. Um, you and any willing creatures nearby vanish instantly, leaving behind a small shockwave of air in your wake and are teleported to any place you choose. Uh, and then you have to roll a d20 to figure out um, how you get there. Um, and I don't, some of, some of them are bad. Mm-hmm. So just don't <laughs> roll low there. Okay. Uh, so I got all of those. And then I'm also going to take familiar from the conjuration path. Um, and then that lets me summon a tiny spectral creature. Um, I'm going to say it's like a, a indigenous to, to uh, my island home. There is a type of bird that is actually uh, a a series of feathery tentacles that it uses to flap around and hover through the air. Um, So it is basically just uh, a a, 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 A tentacle tentacle bird. bird. Yeah, I guess. (laughs) I don't know. I knew where that was going when you said bird. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) But all the tentacles are feathery. So they're like not suction Doesn't cup tentacles. Make it better. It's like those. It's no. like those weird In- starfish or uh, what are those? There's like weird. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. yeah. Only in the air. I like it. The furry starfish. Yeah, per- effectively. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's cool. It has four HP. It's invulnerable to non magical harm. Um, and if it gets reduced to zero HP, it vanishes, and uh, your bond is broken, and then you can summon another one later. I guess. Yeah, but that's pretty sweet. That's fun. Yeah. Oh, it says they won't necessarily like their new employer when you summon them. So uh, the guy gets to choose the creature's background, personality, and speaks for them. It's interesting. You're, okay. You're familiar with who hates you. I know. It could be. <laughs> Why did you take me away from my beautiful island home? Why did you take me away from my wife and children? <laughs> Stop making me oh, feel no, bad. monster. I will help you, but I'm going to make you feel guilty every step of the way. I'm Every time enjoy you speak it. to me, I'll make you feel like crap. <laughs> Every time we touch a tent. <laughs> no, you're juiced by Lizzo. <laughs> all right, is that all your turn? Uh, that's all six of mine, yeah. Cool. My turn. Um, I did not do what you did. I just, like, picked from all over the place. Oh. Um, so from the invocation tree, I picked declare. Once per scene, you may declare a reason for intervening in a matter, stealing your resolve. Mm-hmm. Um, then I picked from the inquiries table, soul gaze, your, Ooh. your eyes turn black, like shimmering gateways to eternity. As you peer into the eyes of a nearby creature, they become momentarily transfixed on your gaze. Um, and then you can roll to see what happens. Ideally, you learn the creature's ideal and flaw. Um, they can also just resist it and they can view your thoughts which is i love the the additional on the 20 you also learn the worst and best thing they have ever done that's super interesting no pressure yeah i know right (laughs) tell me the worst and best thing they've ever done now (laughs) yeah i don't envy the guy in that situation no that like oh i want to know all these things well i don't know that i didn't come up with that Um, from the verdicts table, I picked inspire. You inspire a nearby NPC by reciting a meaningful statement to them. You may invent a famous quote or proverb or borrow one from the real world. The creature must be able to hear and understand you and cannot currently be hostile toward you. Um, and I picked compel truth. Your eyes glow like blue flames as you look into the eyes of a nearby creature and grip their mind. Um, Hopefully, the target is compelled to answer your questions truthfully for the next five minutes, but also it could backfire and they may compel you to answer questions Mm. instead. And from the Wrath Tree, I picked Fiery Avenger. You speak a word of power, igniting your weapon in a magical flame of any color. 
because if you can have a magical sword, why would you not pick that? And then I picked Thunderous Word. You speak a word of power, releasing a thunderous shockwave in the direction you are facing. The wave knocks out, knocks up to three creatures backward and hits them each for two damage. Mm, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Cool. So then it's my go. Mm-hmm. I so, so I also picked a bunch from all over the place. So from healing, I took Mend, which restores five HP, um, does not remove impairments, heal permanent wounds or cure disease, and cannot be used during combat. From Alteration, I took Sleep. You whisper a brief lullaby, putting commoners to sleep for one hour, um, and you have to say a lullaby at the table. Um, Mm. And if you spend extra AP, you can put minions to sleep, which is a type of enemy slash higher level NPC. Um, I then took Death Sense from Necromancy. You naturally sense whether any remnants of the dead are nearby, but not the positions. The guide will notify you when this sense is triggered, and then you can spend extra AP for specific abilities that help you find dead creatures once that's been triggered. I then took Corrupt from the Harm play from the Harm uh, learning path. You grip an organic creature and create. A necrotizing wound. It deals one damage immediately and another one damage at the beginning of their next turn. Mm. Affected creatures can only recover these hit points with the restore spell, which is on the healing playbook and is the final ability in that lineup. Oh, wow. Yep. Gonna have to find an NPC who knows restore. Um, and then in Perception, I took Modulate. You alter the nature and intensity of a nearby creature's physical sensations for up to one hour. Choose one effect. Uh, so the things you can do is temperature, nourishment, or comfort. So you can make them feel too hot, too cold, or totally fine. You can make them feel very, very hungry or totally fine. Or you can comfort, you can make them feel very comfortable or that they can't find comfort however they arrange their body mm. which fun yeah and that's mm-hmm. those are my six wait no i'm missing one which one am I? aha the one that i'm missing is from alteration which was the sleep one uh it's called calcify mm. you touch a creature within range causing its surface to swell and harden during this time they feel numb to external pain the hardened shell absorbs up to two hp from physical hits any excess damage, any damage in excess of two HP hits the creature normally. The creature's mm. skin returns to normal after one minute. So what I like to think is that Teen Beetle causes you to grow an exoskeleton mm. temporarily. That's pretty. I cool. like I the the uh, the what, how that gameplay goes with that, but like the flavor text of causing you to swell and harden. It's kind of off putting. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't it, want my body to it, swell and harden. It's, it sounds I, really like like it starts sounding like, oh, this is going to be an attack. This is something bad that's going to happen to an enemy. But no, it it's actually like uh, it's armor. It's an armor. I make you grow an exoskeleton. Ooh, I want like tentacle exoskeleton. That sounds pretty sweet. No, I want my mist exoskeleton. <laughs> 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 like all your little mist droplets, each get their own individual exoskeletons. I'm snowing. Now you're just like a swarm of like exoskeletons. Ice cubes that rattle. Pretty much. (laughs) (laughs) Wind chimes at that point. All right. So for my six, uh, from the infiltration uh, learning path, I took feather hook, which is an item. It's basically a grappling hook. Um, I would flavor text that to just be like float. But, you know. Um, Then from the surveillance uh, path, I took the tracker, which is you basically plant a bug on someone and you can track them Hmm. um but magically and then from the termination path i took the entire path uh i took the sneak attack ability which is uh once around when someone's attacking someone else from you you can move immediately behind them and uh do one of three things make a basic attack uh incapacitate a commoner or minion uh by touching their pressure points going like full tai lee um or if they're a common or a minion, you could also just instantly kill them. Wow. So fun facts. Um, then I did then you get poison, which is you can basically just create any type of five room po- poisons. Uh, and then there's the death hand, which is like you get a magical cannon, which you can point and it'll like tracer shot 
to someone and deal instantly six damage. And if it's a commoner and minion, they're instantly killed. Wow. Dang. So you get two insta kills for commoners and minions as a termination. Goodness gracious. Um, and then the final ability, which is kind of funny, uh, is the bounty ability. You basically just go out and place a bounty on someone and then you roll your die. And if you roll well, if someone does it, takes care of it for you, just kills this person for you. <laughs> if you don't roll well, if you roll a 1 to a 10, the target that you put a bounty out on puts a bounty on you. And, you're, and it's up to the guy to be like, who gets hit first? <laughs> <laughs> That's very sweet. That's all of that's all of Juice by Lizzo's abilities. Wow. Uh, and it, I love it. We made characters. Yeah. I, I I wanted to create a pew pew mage, uh, but I created the mage with a pew pew weapon and no pew pew spells. No, but you're still pew pew. Still pew pew. It's all, One way it's all or my, another. My whips and and bullets. It's all good. You did it. I think I think we all did it. This is amazing. I think we did pretty great, honestly. Awesome. We beat it. All right. Well, thank you both so much for joining us for our quest character creation episodes. This was really fun. Yeah, it was. Thanks. It was good. <laughs> Russ, you want to remind people where they can find you online? Uh, you can find me online on Twitter at Russ Wildest. You can find me guiding the Prism Pal squad through quest on Twitter at prison pals um and our podcast is on any podcast app that you might have um yeah so that's that's me covered mm -hmm. and kyle what about you i'm also on the prison pals at prison pals um <laughs> but i am at super queero on twitter awesome well thank you everyone for listening and please join us on the next episode for our discussion block Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. 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 Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Session Zero. Session Zero is a discussion podcast that seeks to explore the psychology of role-playing. Each episode will feature RP concepts, stories, and tropes viewed through the lens of psychology by clinical psychologist Porter Green and industrial organizational psychologist Steve Discount. Join us on the couch for the next session.